Welcome to section 4 of bacteria. This is our bacteria overview figure. In this video, we'll be discussing Clostridium perfringens, which you can see right here. This scene takes place during Halloween with this girl dressed up as a clown. Notice that she has a bottle of perfume in her hand which came with the costume. However, I think she overdid it a bit with the perfume, as you can probably tell by all of the perfume that's in the air. Clown sounds kind of like Clostridium, and perfume sounds like perfringens. So, clown perfume for Clostridium perfringens. Just like in other videos, notice that we've included a lot of purple colors in the background. The beautiful purple sunset should help you remember that this is a gram-positive organism. This is a gram stain of Clostridium perfringens. Notice that the organism stains purple and is rod-shaped. Because it's Halloween, we thought it would be fitting to show a bowl of Rice Krispie treats on the ground next to the clown character. She's left the treats on the doorstep for all the trick-or-treaters. Crispy sounds kind of like crepitus, so in this image, the Rice Krispie treats are our symbol for crepitus, which is one of the clinical features of Clostridium perfringens. Crepitus is a term used to describe a popping sound and sensation experienced under the skin, which is due to air within the subcutaneous tissue. This occurs because as the organism metabolizes carbohydrates, it produces gas in the subcutaneous tissue. So, Rice Krispie treats for crepitus. This guy came up to the door to get some Rice Krispie treats, but when the clown came outside with all her smelly perfume, it was a bit too much for him to handle. Notice that he's on his knee with his hand over his mouth as if he's about ready to vomit. This is to remind you that Clostridium perfringens can release a heat labile enterotoxin, which causes food poisoning. The fact that the guy is next to the Rice Krispie treats and that he looks like he's about to vomit should help you remember food poisoning. As this guy became nauseated by the perfume, he fell to his knee and accidentally knocked over this pot full of dirt. The soil that is falling out of the pot is here to help you remember that Clostridium perfringens is commonly found in the soil. Notice that we've included this alpha house sign in the front yard. This is because the house in this scene is a dorm for the alpha sorority. The alpha house sign should help you remember that Clostridium perfringens produces alpha toxin. Next, notice that we've shown a bunch of dumb dumb suckers stuck in this pumpkin next to the alpha house sign. It's Halloween, so a pumpkin fits quite well with the scene, and the dum-dums are in the pumpkin because somebody vandalized it. The dum-dums look like little phospholipids, so this should help you remember that the alpha toxin is a phospholipase. Going along with the vandalism theme, notice that someone even smashed one of the pumpkins on the ground. The pumpkin is round, kind of like a cell, so the fact that it's smashed should help you remember that the alpha toxin degrades cell membranes as well as tissue. When red blood cells are exposed to the toxin, it results in hemolysis. So, smashed pumpkin for degrades tissue and cell membranes. As pumpkins are smashed, seeds naturally spew out all over the ground, so we've shown a bunch of seeds on the ground next to the smashed pumpkin. In our other videos, we've used things with an outer shell to represent spores, but because seeds have a hard outer coat and pumpkin seeds go well with this story, we thought we'd use them in this image to help you remember that Clostridium perfringens is a spore-forming organism. So, pumpkin seeds for spore-forming. As the seeds became exposed, a nearby crow decided to take advantage of this opportunity. He flew down on the ground and began eating the seeds, just as any bird might do in this situation. Crows are good Halloween symbols, and the fact that he's eating the seeds from this smashed pumpkin seems to fit the story quite nicely. The crow here is to help you remember that Clostridium perfringens can cause myonecrosis. Crow sounds kind of like myonecrosis, so this shouldn't be too hard to remember. Myonecrosis is characterized by injury to muscle tissue, resulting in muscle tissue death. So, crow eating seeds for myonecrosis. Okay, now let's get to the bottom of the person responsible for all this unacceptable vandalism. It's not just one person, it's three punk kids. They've been going around trick-or-treating and vandalizing everyone's property. The fact that they've been vandalizing and that they're sticking together as a group of three should help you remember that they're in a gang. Gang sounds like gangrene, which is to help you recall that Clostridium perfringens causes gas gangrene. Gas gangrene is a type of infection that produces gas in dead tissue. So just to summarize, the alpha toxin is a phospholipase, which causes tissue degradation resulting in myonecrosis. As the muscle tissue dies, the bacteria continues to metabolize carbohydrates and produces gas resulting in gas gangrene. The gas production underneath the tissues results in crepitus, which is one of the clinical findings of the disease. This is a picture of gas gangrene. As you can see from the image, this is characterized by swelling, bole, and palpable crepitus of the patient's right leg. Okay, now that we've covered the toxin, let's continue discussing the story. Notice that the three punk kids are wearing masks. This is because it's Halloween and the masks go well with their costumes, but they're also trying to hide their faces so they don't get caught as they go from house to house vandalizing the neighborhood. Just like in other videos, we've included masks in this image to help you remember that Clostridium perfringens is an obligate anaerobe. 
Okay, now let's turn our attention to this creepy murder guy shown on the side of the house. He's a convict who recently escaped from prison and is taking advantage of the chaos of Halloween. It's a bit morbid, but notice that he just killed these two people who are slumped over against the side of the house. Now he's cleaning off his daggers on the ground, resulting in two streaks of blood. This is to help you remember that Clostridium perfringens produces a double zone of hemolysis on blood agar. So two streaks of blood on the ground for a double zone of hemolysis on blood agar. Finally, notice that we've added this janitor guy on the side of the house who is about ready to stand up and clean up all of the mess. He has a bucket with a mop ready to go, so you can tell that he means business. He must have suspected that some vandalism would occur on Halloween, so he came prepared. Anyway, clean sounds kind of like clindamycin, so this cleaning guy is our symbol for clindamycin, which is the treatment for clostridium perfringens. Okay, now that we've covered the image, let's review with the question. A 27-year-old female presents to the emergency department due to a wound from a garden rake that penetrated her leg. Over the next several hours, she develops intense pain and edema over the injured leg. Crepitus is present on physical examination. The organism most likely responsible for this patient's condition produces a toxin with what mechanism of action? Okay, hopefully from the question stem you notice that this patient had a penetrating wound that was likely contaminated with dirt, which we can deduce because the injury was caused by a garden rake. The wound appears to be infected, which is apparent due to the intense pain, edema, and crepitus. These findings are all suggestive of clostridium perfringens, especially crepitus. With this in mind, we're asked what is the mechanism of action of the toxin. So recall that clostridium perfringens produces alpha toxin, which is a phospholipase that degrades cell membranes. So the answer is degrades cell membranes. From the image, recall that the alpha sign, pumpkin with dum-dum stuck in it, and the broken pumpkin, all right here, represent these ideas. And with that, you should have everything you need to know about Clostridium perfringens.